everyone. Thanks for uh, taking the time out to watch this video and find out a bit more about this fund. Uh, I'm Laurie Cummins. I'm a programs officer at Leeds Community Foundation. Um, so I'm leading on this program, which is the LB LGBTQIA plus micro grants. Um, and what this will be is just a little bit of information about the fund, um, about ourselves and our partners, the LGBT Consortium, and uh, yeah, how you can get involved and how you can apply. Just a little bit about Leeds Community Foundation. You've got all the information there to read if you want to know more about us. You can also check out our website. Uh, but the main thing to know is that we operate on a model where we bring in money from the region. Uh, so we leverage we leverage funding from high net worth individuals, corporations, companies, businesses, um, and often work with statutory bodies like Leeds City Council, and then redistribute that funding out to small grassroots community-led charities and organizations across the region. And so some headline information about this fund, uh, the grant size, varies a little bit depending on what kind of organization you are. So if you're a constituted group, meaning that you have uh, a formal written document laying out what your group does and how you do it and what happens with your money and any assets you might have, and that includes things like companies and registered charities, you can apply for up to a £1,000 micro grant. Um, but if you're less formally organized and you don't have a written constitution like that, you can apply for up to £500. Uh, the location of where the funded activity takes place should be within the Leeds City Council area, so do check up on that. Uh, your group doesn't have to be based or registered in Leeds in any way, you just have to have a demonstrable connection to the communities in Leeds that you're wanting to work with. Uh, basically, we're not we're looking to support activity that is of and for Leeds. Uh, we just want to make sure we're not funding anything that's parachuting in for no good reason. Um, so the deadline is the 29th of August. 2024 at 12 noon. Do try to remember that it's 12 noon. Uh, and the duration is up to one year. And we do mean up to. Um, if the activity that you're looking to uh, run is only two months long or can only be two months long for that amount of money, that's absolutely fine. There's lots of flexibility depending on what you need. So a little bit about what the fund can support. Um, quite a wide range of things for this fund. Fundamentally, the point is to support the development and the continuation of work with and for LGBTQIA plus people in Leeds. Um, so obviously that could be a really wide range of things. Um, the grant comes with access to a programme of support led by our partners, and they'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, um, as well as the grant money as well. Um, so a couple of examples here. Um, just to say these are not these are not exclusive. Uh, we really want to know what works for you and what is important to support and empower your communities. Um, so these are not the only things that you can apply for by any means. Um, but I suppose we're looking to support organisational development. So meaning anything that will help the continuation um, and resilience, sustainability of what you're doing and how you do it. Um, so that could be, has been things in the past like uh, yeah, policy development, taking a step back to even just to understand what policies you might need or you might want. Um, things like developing your processes for running your committees or deciding how your leadership is going to work or isn't working. We recognise as well that sometimes in order to do that, what you need is somebody to cover your costs for your day to day stuff to free up that time uh, to take on that reflection process. So if what you want to do is to just have the funding to cover your weekly meetups or your monthly meetups for however long so that you can take that time to step back and understand what you need that's absolutely fine for this grant as well and within that as well if you are unconstituted but it's something that you're looking to explore people often do um because it can open up things like access to more grants for example um you can absolutely use this money to take the time to figure out how that works for you and whether you do want to constitute um, and yeah, just that final point is to really emphasise that we want to hear what is what is needed for your communities. So uh, just a little bit on our two roles. So us at Leeds Community Foundation, which is where I work, uh, I'm the programme lead. So if you talk to us about it, it will probably be me that you talk to. Um, what we do is we're managing and overseeing this funding programme. 
uh, we're responsible for creating the application process, the technical way that that works as well. So the online application portal. Um, we're the ones that communicate all the funding decisions and arrange that decision making process. And uh, we can support you with your application in terms of things like whether you're eligible to apply um, and how that application process works. Um, what we do, don't do just to say is help you with supporting your application concept because it's really important to, you, to us that it comes from you, that it comes from community level. And then I won't go into too much detail because they're here to um, talk to you about it in a minute, but the LGBT Consortium, a national organization for supporting LGBT communities um, are partnering with us on this fund and uh, are the ones running the peer support program that will come with the funding. Uh, just a little bit on the application process. Like I've hinted at, everything is online. Um, you will find the link to apply on our website, uh, along with the application criteria. Um, if you do face any barriers to submitting the application, please get in touch with us and we'll figure out how we can help you to remove those barriers and how we can um, support you with that whole process. So it's an online system. You can save your drafts and you can come back to them later. Uh, just uh, with all online systems, probably save it elsewhere as well. Um, once an application has been submitted, we assess it. And what that means is we uh, read your application in detail and assess it against the fund criteria to see how well it aligns and also look at how feasible it is and what other stuff we might need from you to make sure that it can happen. Um, then goes to an independent panel. So. That'll be a group of people with lots of different backgrounds, different expertise, different lived and professional experiences. Um, and that's just to ensure that we're not the ones making the decision and that a lot of different perspectives have been brought into the room in deciding who can and can't have this funding on this occasion. A um, couple of things to emphasize about our funding applications. Uh, we're not looking for really formal language and we're not looking for really long answers. It can be really um, pressurized and we understand that there's always a sense that you should write things perfectly or formally or according to, you know, essay standards. But what we're really looking for is clarity. It's just a few questions about what you want to do, why you want to do it and how you think it will achieve your aims. Um, and that's really what we need to hear from you um, on that. Please draft your own answers. Um, a lot of people use generative AI for application answers at the moment. And we completely understand that as an accessibility tool. Um, but we do just really request that the application that you're writing comes from your community needs and chat GPT just can't do that for any of us at the moment. Um, so please do make sure that your answers come from yourself and your communities. Um, if, you, if you're not used to working with us or writing these applications, just to let you know that we understand that projects change and that budgets change and that things will be different to how it was written in the application and that's absolutely fine what we're looking for is an indication and we won't hold you to exactly what you've written down and your exact budget breakdown at the end of it um and as i've said what we're looking for is clarity to understand that it aligns with the fund and that it will have a potential positive impact um as i've said before if you do have any questions about this please get in touch we're very happy to talk it through with you now yeah, I'm going to hand over to our lovely colleagues at the consortium to talk a little bit about their end of things. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll let Emma introduce herself in a moment, but I'm Lei. Uh, I'm the participation lead at LGBT Plus Consortium. And we're going to briefly speak about what we do, what the equity fund is, and how we're partnering um, to provide some of the wraparound support for this micro grants programs grantees. So, it's been covered briefly, but Consortium, it's a UK-wide membership and infrastructure organisation. We're also a specialist funder. In the recent years, we've distributed lots of funding to, for different programmes. Uh, we've currently got a few different funds open. So we'll cover the equity fund in a moment, but we have a Devolved Nations trans and non-binary fund, and we're hoping to open a UK-wide trans campaigning fund as well. So there's a lot going on. It's really exciting. Um, I would say probably the like the, the main portion of what um we can offer to the grantees is going to be around kind of like leadership development and governance and fundraising support. Um I'll go to Emma first 
to explain a little bit about the equity fund and what it is and how to apply before I speak about the wraparound support that's available, if that's all right. Thanks, Leigh. Yeah. Hi, my name's Emma. Um, I'm a grants officer with Consortium. And um, yeah, as part of my part of my role, um, I oversee the, the various grants programmes um, that we're running. And um, as I mentioned, uh, in May, we launched the second round of our equity fund, um, which is thanks to National Lottery players um, as it's funding from the National Lottery Community Fund that allows us to, to deliver this fund. Um, and the fund's focus is on supporting user-led uh, LGBT plus organisations um, working with targeted, underrepresented and under-resourced communities um, in England. So um, in terms of who can apply, um, it's uh, primarily for England-based uh, non-profit groups and organisations of all manner of sizes um, that are led by and for LGBT people um, that are working with five specific communities of focus. Um, so they are uh, deaf, disabled, neurodivergent LGBT people, LGBT plus women, LGBT people of the global majority, older LGBT people, and trans and non-binary people. So um, as part of the eligibility process, um, we require groups to be led by and working for one or more of the communities of focus. So um, unfortunately, wider um, LGBT plus organisations that are working for the wider community um, might not necessarily be eligible. It's ensuring that um, groups that are led by one or more of those communities of focus um, are receiving the funding as, as from research shows they're the most under-resourced and underserved um, in grant making at the, in the UK at the moment. And um, grants range from uh, the people can apply for from £100 up to 25 k um, in, in terms of what they need um, for their work or, or their projects that they're working on. And um, as I said, applications have opened uh, in May and um, we're running the programme until um, the 21st of November. At 12 p.m. Um, so applications are open for quite quite a few more months, and um, we'll be making awards on a rolling basis. So it's not the case of uh, waiting until the end of November um, to make the decisions. We're making them on a rolling basis as and when they come in. And uh, just to check what else, um, yeah, in terms of what people um, can apply for, um, they can apply for you know if you've got. A social group that you run that's, that's very small or that you've noticed a need in your area um, for a startup sort of social group um, that's absolutely fine and any sort of projects that you're working on um, similarly to Leeds Community Foundation if um, you're working on um, you need to develop your leadership sort of development or your governance um, anything like that if you need to um, take on more trustees or directors things like that um, it might be core costs or capacity building to to, to grow the organization or um, you know it might be a piece of research that that will benefit the wider community as well and um, that's also fine um, so it's a wide um, variety of applications that, that we get for the fund um, and in terms of the application process um, that we run um, we accept um, online applications via our form. Um, we've done a lot of work with um, the LGBT community and, and organisations that we support um, to try and make it as, as accessible um, as possible uh, for people to apply to and, um, and as easy um, as it can be. Um, so it's not an extensive form. Um, we also uh, accept video applications um, so people can um, answer the questions that are, that are um, required from the form as a video, which we then would transcribe ourselves into uh, sort of Word documents. Um, and we also offer uh, supported applications. Um, so it might be the case that someone has never applied for um, a grant application before, doesn't quite know, um, you know, the, the process to follow or they might have, you know, access um barriers or English might not be their first language you know so it's it's um, a supported application with us um, to ensure that there's a, you know to, to ensure there's le at least barriers as, as there can be to, to making an application um, yeah so uh, over to later sort of explain about um, the the wraparound support we can offer and, and examples of fund funding um, that uh, consortium has given in the past yeah absolutely so this is a really exciting partnership um, as we 
first of all, you can apply for both grants at the same time um, if you're eligible. Um, but also we're going to be combining our wraparound support. So at the previous equity fund, um, we did quite a lot in terms of um, supporting grantees with whatever they needed. We want to take the same approach, the kind of listening to feedback from grantees and um, being quite active in kind of tailoring to what they need, because it might look different now than it did two years ago. But I'll run through some of the things that we did previously um, to give you a sense of what we'll be doing this time around. This wraparound support will be from towards the end of the year and into next year. Um, and everything is totally optional. It's just an offer there for you that if you wanted to attend something, if you're successful in getting a grant with either of us, um, that you can kind of come along, let us know what you want as well. So firstly, um, leadership development. So previously we held roundtables, we had workshops, and we're hoping to develop a mentoring program, um, working with other members in the team within consortium as well, uh, working with some of our um, London members, so that's a really exciting thing um, that we'll be doing using kind of our large pool of grantees, but also bringing in um, people from other organizations that, you know, have a lot of experience in the field or maybe are working in, you know, niche areas, maybe like um, global majority LGBT plus health. Um, maybe they can sort of, yeah, support newer groups um, in their development. So support around governance and fundraising is another thing that came up and we definitely expect that to come up again. So we had had the Bering Foundation come in to put on some training for us. We created some resources that kind of got shared out. Uh, and that was a really fantastic way of kind of taking a step back. It was a bit of a fundraising 101, um, kind of, yeah, working through different ways of getting in funding. Um, and yeah, it's a really great space that if you are newer to putting in applications, but also if you are more experienced, um, yeah, some really great sessions that we held around that. Um, also, in-person meetups, most of the support that we do give is online, but we do try to have a couple of in-person meetups as well. So we did have a showcase, which was a chance for grantees to sort of show funders the work that they had previously done. Um, but we also held a fantastic meetup, a networking and panel discussion in Leeds um, that Laurie participated in. That was a really fantastic way for people to get to meet each other and kind of, yeah, chat about what the state of the sector is and to get advice kind of yeah that sort of peer support um and going on to peer support that's something that we've held quite a lot of so it has been quite specific um in the past where we've done neurodivergent peer support for any grantees that are neurodivergent um they can sort of attend to speak around their experiences and kind of offer support to each other that was fantastic um and then another thing that we offer is just general signposting um, sharing things across our networks and our newsletters, using our social media to kind of ampl amplify if you need volunteers or some of your funded work and linking up to other organisations. As we have access to hundreds and hundreds of LGBT plus groups across the UK, uh, we want to kind of, yeah, bring groups together that need it. Um, to go on to some of our previously funded work, Emma touched on the sorts of things that we can fund. Um, if you look at our website that's linked, if you go to the equity fund, you'll be able to find every single award that was made in the last equity fund round. So there should be about 75 little posts there explaining what was awarded and for what events. So, you know, some examples of some things that we've awarded are lots and lots of meetups. So hiring pools, venues, access to get there, food uh, for groups that are kind of um, doing meetups every week or every month. We funded culturally sensitive therapy um we've funded prides and everything that goes into that and lots of amazing workshops around basketball arts and crafts um newsletters to go out and some amazing queer um films to be made as well so that should give you a sense of what we funded before and what we're looking to fund but as emma said we can fund not just the exciting project things but also core cast to keep an organization going um you can find us on our website as is shown here and you can always get in touch with us um, if you have any questions. Thanks, Laurie. Great. Thanks so much, Diane, Emma. Um, yeah, so that's it from us today. Um, as Lo said, this is a really exciting fund that we're running and a really exciting partnership and uh, we hope that it's an opportunity that can work for you. Uh, so get in touch if you have any extra questions.